now limit doesn't exist in three cases first is that fx is not defined in the neighborhood of a since we are dealing with limits so we are basically concerned with what the function or what the behavior is of the function is in the neighborhood of a now as fx is not defined in the neighborhood of a we say that the limit doesn't exist let's take an example for this case let's say i have a function ln of x minus 1 by x square plus x plus 1 here you see that if i approach this function from the right hand side that means i'll put a value of x as something just more than 1 so let's put that as 1 plus h minus 1 where h is a very small number right now so this becomes ln of h by 1 plus h whole square now what will happen is this ln of h is taking a very large negative value so it's taking a very large negative value this that is fine we the limiting value can be a very large negative value but what happens when we approach x from the left hand side let's see i take x equals to 1 minus h so that we are approaching from the left hand side now what this becomes is 1 minus h minus 1 right now what now happens is on the numerator i have now ln of minus h by some quantity in the denominator now ln of minus h you know that is an this is a negative quantity ln is not defined for a negative quantity so the left hand limit doesn't exist right hand limit exists and is equal to you can say a very large negative number and the left hand limit doesn't exist so now since the left hand limit doesn't exist so the limit doesn't exist the second reason for non existence of limits is as i said fx doesn't have a unique tendency or fx has a very much elastic behavior let's say i have a function cos of 1 minus x cos of 1 by x sorry and i have to find this value you know that cos of some theta lies between minus 1 to 1 for any theta so i know cos of 1 by x will obviously lie between minus 1 to 1 but since i am approaching 0 1 by 0 is a very large positive number or let's make it more clear let's approach x 0 from the right hand side first so i have this h is a positive number now since h is a very small quantity 1 by h is a very large number i don't know what the value of 1 by h is it can be a very large positive number okay now since it's a very large positive number this is the cos x graph it can be this it can be this it can be this it can be this the positive number can be anything okay so since the positive number can be anything it can take any value between minus 1 to 1 so i have not sure what the value of this is i know it's between minus 1 to 1 but i'm not sure what the value of this function is so in this case the fx doesn't have a ten unique tendency it has a tendency to oscillate between minus 1 to 1 but it doesn't have a unique tendency so in this case again we say that fx doesn't exist 
The third case is the very obvious case, in which case the left hand limit is not equal to the right hand limit. Let us say I take the function fractional part of x and I ask you what is the limit when x approaches 1. Okay. To find this, let us first plot the graph of fractional part of x. Okay. Now, you see that if I approach x from the left hand side, the function well value gets closer and closer to 1. So, the left hand limit is 1. But when I approach 1 from the right hand side, the function is approaching close and close to 0. So, the right hand limit is 0. Now, here the left hand limit is not equal to the right hand limit. So, we say that the limit does not exist in this case. Okay. So, in questions of limits, the questions are generally of two types. First, you have to check whether limit exists or not. So, basically the questions can be broadly classified into two parts. The first is the existence of limits, check whether limit exists or not. And the second case is that if limit exists, what is the value of the limit or evaluation of limits? Now, we will take this one by one. Let us first see questions on existence of limits. Now, before we start off with this topic that is existence of limits, there are few important series expansions you should remember. So, let us discuss those before. The first one is expansion of e to the power x, which is equal to 1 plus x square This goes on. The second is of a to the power x, which is equal to 1 plus x log a. These expansions you will get in any standard book. So, either you can have a look at this formulas now, or you can just refer to your book. 1 plus x to the power n. This you will get by just a binomial expansion. The fourth one is a very important one is of log 1 plus x. Here x lies between minus 1 to 1. Goes on like this. Now we have also some expansions for trigonometric functions like sin x, cos x, tan x. Let us have a look at those also. Sin of x. The expansion of this is x minus the expansion of cos of x is. And the expansion of tan of x is a 
it goes on like this so these were some of the important series expansions now the other term should know is what is an indeterminate form 